platform. Step up and, and speak out. Good evening, welcome to The Platform. I am Annalisa Dube. This evening we are going to be discussing intellectual property. Now tomorrow, the 26th of April, is World Intellectual Property Day. This event was established by the World Intellectual Property Organization, YPO, in the year 2000. And the aim really was to raise awareness of how patterns, copyrights, trademarks and designs impact on daily life as well as celebrating the creativity and contributions made by creators and innovators and artists who are working to develop all societies across the globe now this evening we're going to be mainly focusing on the music industry in Zimbabwe and if you are a musician if you're an artist and you really want to understand more about intellectual property and how you can protect your music this is a show for you and remember our whatsapp number is 0731 now the 2018 theme is powering change women in innovation and creativity in studio with me this evening I have members of the Zimbabwe Music Rights Association. I am joined by Ms. Policy Lengube, who is Executive Director at Zimura. Good evening, ma'am, and welcome to the program. Good evening, Monelis. I am also joined by the Deputy Director at Zimura, Henry Makombe. Good evening. And, um, I also have the pleasure of having our Honorable Fortune Chassi, who is a legislator for Mazowe South, and he's also a musician, and in his cap capacity as a legislator, he's been pushing uh, for the rights of musicians in Zimbabwe. Good evening, Honorable. It's a pleasure to have you in the program. Thank you. Good evening, Mona Lisa. All right, so maybe um, I'll start with uh, the members from Zimura. Let's start with the basics. Uh, as Zimbabwe Music Rights Association, what is your role in the music sector in Zimbabwe? Thank you. Um, the role of the Zimbabwe Music Rights Association is to protect the copyright of um, music authors and publishers. Um, how we do that? We license people who use music in business premises. We start with uh, broadcasters. Broadcasters are our main clients because you will notice that broadcasters use most of the music during their operations. We go to shops, banks, hotels, restaurants, nightclubs, you name it. And once we've collected what are called copyright fees, we then pay royalties to the artists. Okay, so how can a, a seeing as like an association, I'm assuming that musicians have to join Zemura? Yes, they have to join. Uh, it's not an association per se. The name is misleading. It's a member-driven organization and members have to join but that does not necessarily mean that your copyright gets protected when you join Zimura, no. Mm -hmm. The moment you uh, produce your intellectual property into some tangible form, you already have copyright. The reason why you join is so that we have your details, your personal details, your banking details, we can um, know where to get you and, and things like that. Okay, so uh, we just need to give this clarified. So if a particular musician has not necessarily approached Zimura to be a member, as you said, are you in a position to protect the copyright? As you said, uh, you have a team that goes around uh, at radio stations and in, in uh, different places where music is played. Are they protected? Yes, we are obliged to protect them. Actually, they are protected by the Copyright Act. And how we work with them is that they can walk into our offices if their music has been played and there's evidence that their music has been used by any business premise, then we are obliged to give them their royalties even if they are not our member. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, I can also engage Mr. Makombe here, who's also the Deputy Director. Um, how do you then, uh, you spoke about getting evidence to say that music has been played. How really do you do this? Please walk us through the process of how uh, music is actually uh, collected, the information is collected to make sure that musicians are actually ripping off their sweat. Thank you very much for that uh, good question. Um, we get what we call playlist or log sheets from the broadcasters, for example. Uh, each time a DJ is on air, when you play music, it's supposed to be logged on the playlist. And then we get those log sheets uh, on a monthly basis from each station. And then we use that as the basis of our distribution to identify whose music was played, where and how many times. 
and have you been receiving this playlist uh, faithfully from various broadcasters? Um, 99% yes, um, but um, we are happy, we are very excited that uh, uh, ZBC is now moving to into uh, digital. Um, they were using um, analog system, but uh, some of the log sheets that we have been receiving uh, were not clear and uh, it was prejudicial to the artist at the end of the day. So um, the, the migration from analog to digital is going to improve okay yes. so maybe let's let's look at uh, maybe i might want to engage uh, honorable chassis here maybe let me start in your capacity as a musician are you a member of zamora um i, I think by default mm -hmm. um as policy has indicated it's quite some process for you to go through in order for you to um, to be able to benefit. Um, for example, you, for them to effectively protect you, you have to submit the lyrics um, in, in a very detailed uh, fashion. I haven't had, I haven't had the opportunity to, to do that. Um, it's something that I'm currently working on. Um, but uh, I want to say that um, uh, we are having this discussion at a most opportune moment. Intellectual property is a very important um, um, industry. In fact, in the developed world, it's the foundation of uh, economic development. Now, when you look at uh, music in this country, uh, uh, in terms of protection, it's really in a, in a sad, sad state. Musicians are no longer able to make, um, they've basically abandoned their rights vis-a-vis -vis copyright. There's so much piracy. I think Dr. Mafumo was complaining the other day that he went to Blawayo and bought uh, a CD with 10 of his albums, including a song that has not been released. He bought it for 50 cents. He bought his own song that his has not been released on the street. Not his own song. Ten albums on one CD, including a new song which has not been released. So, in my considered view, we need to tighten the law uh, on copyright. We need to penalize. We, first of all, we need to register people who print CDs. Um, locally prepared uh, printed CDs must have a mark that shows that they are genuine and that they have not been pirated. We need to penalize people who play pirated music. In other words, the police must be able, as they do in South Africa, when you are driving to stop you, check the car, check your CD. If it is fake, uh, you become answerable. We also need to recognize the negative effects of technology. The fact that, you know, you can propagate music through WhatsApp. We should be able to get to a point where we criminalize the um, forwarding of music that is not genuine. Okay, so maybe uh, in that regard, I would engage uh, Zimura here. What has been, uh, Honorable Chassis spoke about piracy, which I'm sure a lot of us can be a testimony of, especially looking that everybody's trying to make a living. People have resorted to selling CDs at the expense of musicians who are also trying to make a livelihood out of music. As Zimura, what have you noted to be maybe some of the major loopholes when it comes to piracy in Zimbabwe? Wow. Um, there are quite a lot. Um, we, as Zimura, we've tried to handle the piracy issue, but we've been met with a lot of challenges. Um, challenge number one. Okay, maybe before you go into the challenges, how have you been trying to, to fight piracy as Zimura? Through raids with the police. But if I start with raids, it will not come out nicely. <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, how we've tried to keep it is we've uh, come together with the law enforcement agents um, through the raids, and then once you've raided the people, you have to go to the courts. Who will you be raiding? Uh, mostly the people who sell pirated products on the streets, okay. even the premises where you find them duplicating music. Okay. Yeah. Once you've done that process of raiding, you then have to go to the courts, and this is where we've uh, maybe met the the great the great of the challenges, because we have the Copyright and Neighbouring Rights Act, which criminalises the act of piracy, and it actually stipulates that if you are caught with uh, infringed copies of music, you are supposed to be given um, a, a, a level ten sentence. Level ten comes from the criminal. A code mm-hmm. and it's equivalent to some seven hundred dollars. It also says that you can be given this charge and two years, a maximum of two years in jail. But you notice that this has never happened in the courts. The highest charge that you've ever uh, noticed being given to a, a pirate is some four hundred dollars maximum. And for jail sentences, is two months, three months. Some are even discharged, cautioned and discharged. Some are given community service. So we notice that there is lack of proper implementation of the Copyright Act. Because if it was um, properly implemented, would get maybe deterrent um, sentences. So I think what we need now are statutory sentences like the one they have for people who steal livestock. I think that would be more effective because here we are, we have an act which states what it says, but then the magistrate have got their own levels and they've got their own understanding. Um, the other challenge I was going to talk about is ignorance of intellectual property, ignorance of copyright. If ignorance we, by whom? By the artists themselves? Uh, by, by everybody. everybody. It starts with the artist, it goes to the users, it goes to the law enforcement agents, it goes to the judiciary. Basically everybody in Zimbabwe. The intake of intellectual property is very low. And what have you noted to be the reason why? I mean, if you are uh, or you are Zimura, you play a part in this. What have you noted to be the reason why there is very little information on intellectual property in the country? Um, we haven't been educating people on intellectual property. If you notice right now, we have uh, education being offered at master's level at the University of um, Africa University. But we don't have um, courses at lower level which concentrate entirely on intellectual property. People who have studied intellectual property have studied it outside of Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. And here in Zimbabwe, you only get to learn intellectual property if you are interested in the subject. So we've been advocating for intellectual property to be included in the school curriculum so that children from a lower level can learn copyright in their own language that they can understand so that as they grow, they will get to appreciate intellectual property and how it affects the artists if their intellectual property is not protected, how it should affect the artists if everybody is pirating music and not buying their music. Okay, so let's looking at the let's look at the importance of intellectual property in, in respect of the music industry in Zimbabwe. Why is it important? Maybe let's start with artists. We have new artists that are coming up every day. We know as, as the FM Stereo, I know there are people that bring their music every single day how can artists get to know about intellectual property maybe let's start with the basics how is intellectual property important to an artist we're speaking to artists this evening we're speaking to a number of people and they're listening they want to know why they should learn about intellectual property and how it can help them protect their music um it is very vital for artists to learn about intellectual property because this intellectual property is what makes them benefit from their creativity. It's as good as somebody who wakes up every morning and goes to work and gets a salary and gets a pension at the end of their working period. What intellectual property does is it gives back to the artist who has taken time creating using their brains, bringing something that will entertain the public. Um, I'll liken it to tangible property because when we are talking about intellectual property we are talking about intangible property something that you cannot hold something that you cannot see but something which is very valuable and uh, i've certainly said that for me intellectual property is more valuable than tangible property at times why do i say so 
if somebody steals a cow, for instance, they would have stolen um, something worth $400 from one person, mm -hmm. and that's about it. But if you steal a song from Macheso, and this song is in... Um, they, it's being liked by the people and people are supposed to be buying originals and all that. You've stolen from maybe six generations or even ten generations of him because uh, copyright will last for his lifetime and for 50 years after his death. Meaning he, after he dies, his song will still be playing and his family will still be benefiting in terms of royalties. So it's a culture that needs to be instilled in the Zimbabwean society in, in, in its entirety? Sure. Okay, you tuned into the platform. We're talking about intellectual property. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Ed Sheeran. Hey, everyone, this is Demi Lovato. The hits are on one station where hit music lives. All the hits. See. Welcome back to the platform. I am Annalisa Dube. This evening we are talking about intellectual property. Tomorrow is World Intellectual Property Day and in Zimbabwe we're having our commemorations and we're also going to be talking about that later on in the program. Uh, before the break, we spoke about uh, the importance of intellectual property uh, to all artists and we spoke about some of the challenges that Zimura is facing in order to protect uh, artists. In studio with me, I'm joined by uh, the Executive Director at Zimura Policy in Mube, as well as the Deputy Director at Zimura Henny Makombe. I also have Honorable Fortune Chassis, who is a legislator for Mazawe South, and he is also a musician. Now, Honorable Chassis, uh, what have you, as a musician, as you are getting into the industry, do you think there is enough? maybe access to information or maybe some sort of orientation as a new musician into the industry of how probably you would know because obviously you have a, a low background mm -hmm. but maybe looking at someone who is new in the industry and they don't know how to get themselves around do you think there is enough access to that information as a as a musician that is coming onto the scene i don't think that there is a sufficient information that is getting to um, musicians um, I think that um, we need is uh, I think police Le was saying we need in, in, in some countries particularly the developed world even kindergarten children are taught the importance of creativity and its protection so primary school children must be able to understand that when they develop or innovate uh, something they should be able to protect it and make money out of it now a lot of our um, youngsters if you look at uh, Zim dance or um, it's a complete movement and that is a movement that operates completely I think without reference to intellectual property issues copyright issues they just make their music dish it out and hope to make money on live performances so that is an indictment uh, on our system i think that uh, government needs to be very proactive in this in this uh, uh, respect and uh, ensure that uh, there are programs to train new entrants into the music world make them understand how they can make money out of it and that music is a business and the primary source of money will be the cds that they will so. Okay. Um, there is a comment that has come through here. This says, "Our musicians cry for about piracy, but what? But they are, they are also buying pirated music." Panemun anoto wia pa Helensville weko anti corruption anoto piwa mari neva no tengesa pirated music. What is your comment to that, uh, Mister Lee? It is true that um, some artists actually buy pirated music, uh, like um, Honorary Puchas has just said. Uh, there are artists who go into the music industry without knowing their rights. Most of them don't know their rights. They only get to know about copyright when they are already in the industry. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should go back and refer to our economy. Our economy has... Um, has... Uh, has led us to a situation where people don't have formal jobs. So you have a lot of youths who then 
look at what opportunities are there and playing music is one of the opportunities and they think they will make money but they don't look at what is in it how do you make money because in music there there are three streams that are supposed to give you money three revenue streams with the first one being the sales of music which are no longer happening because of piracy the second one is um, live performances and the realities that we talk about it Zimira actually a third revenue stream for artists but now you find that some of them are Uh, now taking those royalties from Zimira as the first revenue stream which is uh, an upside down situation and the reason why you find an artist buying pirated music is because they do not know how bad piracy is for them some of them <coughs> can actually say piracy is good for me because it makes me known by the people you are just getting known by the people but, but you're, you're not getting paid <laughs> That yeah. is what they need to know, that mm. piracy might make you be known by the people, but your being known by the people without any money is not going to benefit you. Yeah. But have you uh, have so, you engaged them? Have you engaged the artists to inform them all this information that you put in across of the three types of revenue? Have you engaged the artists to understand exactly how it's working? We always do. We run uh, workshops, awareness raising workshops. But the problem is most of these artists do not attend these workshops. We might call a workshop and only 20, 30 people come. And the rest of them out there, they don't come. They think they know all, but they know nothing. How do you relay the information on the workshops to the artists? Maybe they don't receive the, the information that there is a workshop. Uh, these days we have social media. We use WhatsApp, we use our Facebook page, we use the website, we use Twitter, anything you can think of. And most of these artists are in WhatsApp groups. Mm -hmm. And this information moves in WhatsApp groups. And then some of them can even come uh, without us having their contacts. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the information is moving. Okay, so you also so, need participation them, from the artists. Uh, Honorable, you wanted to come in? Yes, I, I wanted to say that, uh, you, you see, there's been a, a transformation in the music industry. We used to have Galo and other related uh, entities that were involved in the protection as well as marketing of music. But things have changed uh, over the years. And I think that uh, for many musicians, um, they are still challenged by this, by this environment. But there's also, I think, a culture in this industry which does not recognize that um, music is um, a source of living. For example, if you have an album, somebody will send you a message or call you and say, music uh, they don't say can I buy it from you you know and um, also I, I don't know you know places where people are taught um, not to play instruments and to sing and that type of thing where the part of the curriculum actually speaks about uh, issues of copyright um, the impression I get is you know you are taught to play a guitar Uh, Mbira and piano and that type of thing. Uh, you are very good. If you get your certificate, you go. I also don't think that uh, the curriculum in the schools where there is music, there is anything about intellectual property and copyright and you know, the business aspects of, uh, of, of music. So it's our entire attitude to this. The fundamental point is um, if people don't see a benefit in a system they will not respect it mm -hmm. you see so we need to get to a level of protection where uh, artists see that we benefit from this um, there is some incentive and right now I, I think as the colleagues are speaking the, um, the, the, the framework doesn't give one the confidence if somebody is caught and they, they are cautioned and uh, discharged, it doesn't help us. I think for starters, we need to have mandatory minimum sentences. If you are found with CDs that are fake, you must go for a certain minimum sentence and the magistrate has got no discretion. Once that has been proved, they must be obligated, as is the case with stock theft, to impose that penalty. And we also need those penalties, those uh, convictions, 
to be publicized sufficiently so that the generality of the public knows mm -hmm. yeah do you think it's feasible i mean looking at the way things are right now in zimbabwe i mean every corner that you go to people are selling pirated uh, cds and you're talking about having a a sentence that you say you know what, everyone who's found with a pirated cd is going to be given a certain amount of uh, of of uh, time in prison yes. do you think it's feasible I, really I, looking I, at the way things are i think it is feasible um, it's just that as a society we have taken a very flippant attitude towards uh, music. How can Thomas Mafumo's 10 albums on one CD be sold for 50 cents? We, it's, it's pure theft. People are just stealing from, they don't realize how much uh, one spends to come up with one song. You have to hire artists to play the various instruments. You don't do it on one day. You know, it's the ex I don't think you can produce an album in this country uh, at a minimum of less than 3,000. It's not possible. And then somebody sells 10 albums for 50 cents. We need a complete mind shift, both at government level and the generality of society. There's nothing that stops the police from... It's very easy. If you go to Mount Pleasant, Bond Shopping Center, you find a guy there selling hundreds Mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. tens, hundreds of copyrighted, uh, a bit of pirated uh, music. And the police are there in Marlborough. They can come and raid there. They don't need to go with, uh, with the Zimura. It's a, an offense just like pickpocketing, theft, robbery. The ZRP must descend on these people because they are destroying people's lives. But it has become the norm in it is, outside. It's accepted. People just pass by and, and yes. let it go. Yeah. Mm. Just to okay. add to that, um, what we notice is that uh, maybe uh, I can call it the political will that we need in this piracy thing. We need the powers that be to, to act, to take the lead. I'll give you an example. We're at one, at one stage when government said they didn't want the touts on the streets, for about two weeks or so there were no touts because the police were all over them. But with pirates, you can even find the policemen themselves buying pirated products in uniform, meaning they don't know the, 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 the crime that is involved with piracy. They think it's an everyday thing. It's normal to buy pirated products. and such that somebody goes and buys a pirated product, and they are the police who are supposed to arrest the pirates, but they will still go and give them money. Have you, have you engaged uh, the powers that be, as you said? And maybe we look at the, the minister in charge of arts, uh, who probably is the minister of uh, sports and arts and recreation. Have you engaged his ministry in this uh, fight against piracy as Zimura? Yes, we have. We've actually engaged the new minister and he says in the process of uh, making sure that we get better sentences for pirates. Uh, there's a comment here from Manzlam Pofu. Um, uh, she or he says the courts do not value intellectual property, but they value tangible property. It's high time the judicial imposes deterrent sentences to send a signal to that would be to the offenders. We need to develop the minds of the communities pertaining piracy first. I think uh, he she is agreeing with you, Honorable, about what you said about having uh, maybe sentences that make sure that people do not actually engage into piracy. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Macombe, you wanted to come in? Y yes, sure. Um, Implementation of the copyright itself is also a challenge by the judiciary uh, when they interpret the copyright law. Uh, you'd find out that um, as someone who is caught with 300 or 3,000 copies uh, of um, CDs, could be uh, MP3s or MP4s, mm -hmm. they are being given $20 fine. And then uh, the copyright itself is, is, is very clear that um, someone who is caught with any article, any article, it means a musical work. So if you are caught with a one single CD with uh, 300 uh, tracks on it, you're supposed to, to be charged uh, individually. Those tracks, they're supposed to be charged as different counts not 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 as as one count mm -hmm. uh, when you have uh, 1000 copies mm -hmm. so the interpretation of the copyright by the judiciary is also uh, not good yeah. um, mm -hmm. so it, it needs to uh, we need to as stakeholders we also need to engage mm -hmm. maybe the 
uh, PPs and educate them and also police officers just like what uh, my CEO has just said that uh, they are buying music uh, in, in, in uniform in the streets. Um, if you want to be um, uh, uh, blatantly true, uh, you want to speak the truth and to be honest, uh, every household uh, has got probably more than five or ten copies of pirated discs countrywide. And, and what is it that you are doing? Even the law enforcement agents, they, they have those copies. Mm -hmm. So the mindset, the culture of our people here in Zimbabwe, we uh, should maybe not only in Zimbabwe or in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, is that we, we, we just want to get things for free. For free, yeah. Yes, so if, because if, music mm -hmm. is readily available in the market, so we feel we can get it for free. Yeah. But you're supposed to pay for it. If I, if I can just add, I think this... Uh, musicians have to understand that they are the most interested in this issue. They've got to be organized around it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's where the problem starts. Um, I don't think that the musicians in this country have really come together as a force and, uh, you know, put pressure on, on government. Everybody realizes that uh, music is important for transmission of mm -hmm. messages. Mm -hmm. yeah, private companies know that. If they want to advertise yes, something, yes. they look for these musicians. Mm -hmm. They will look for Killer T, mm -hmm. they will look for Japreza, and everybody recognizes that. Mm -hmm. And so musicians have to be an organized force to ensure that uh, every stakeholder understands this point, mm -hmm. uh, particularly government. They are the ones who should make suggestions. And I like the fact that the Minister of Sports, um, who is responsible for culture, is, is indicated that we need a think tank. We must research, understand the extent of the problem, and then also have comparative studies. For example, we need to understand why Nigerian music is a big industry and is very popular here. And in some instances, overshadowing our own artists what is it that is being done properly elsewhere like i indicated earlier on we need to understand the role of technology and um you know factor that in into the copyright laws for example today i just stood in front of a little tax shop and there was a notice there a uh, music downloading like you are saying putting them on um flashes so, uh, you can't blame these people. They don't know. They don't know. Yeah, and they just see a business opportunity. People come, you give, you give them your uh, memory stick, and they give you 500 songs. Every song that you want okay, to Okay, so we have established that there are laws. Uh, that we, I think it was Mr. Makombo who spoke about uh, the copyright laws in Zimbabwe that specifically mm. say exactly what is supposed to be done to a person who's seen with pirated mm. issues. We've spoken about how we've identified that uh, musicians, they're not forthcoming to maybe come to these workshops to understand. We've also mm. identified that there are maybe, maybe a loophole, number of loopholes in the way the education system is, is done. When someone is being taught how to play, play the instrument, they're supposed to be taught about intellectual property we've identified a number of loopholes but um we need let's talk about immediate solutions now that we have identified as zamura as uh, honorable trust you've identified these issues that are coming in the music industry in zimbabwe uh be it in the law regard be it the law enforcers themselves talking about the courts talking about the musicians mm -hmm. let's look at the immediate solutions how can each and every one any stakeholder who is concerned uh as far as intellectual property is concerned moving forward what should they do to make sure that their music is protected to make sure that they're also pro protecting the livelihood of the next person i think uh, what needs to be done first is to bring the law that's going to make it uh, an offense and it's, it's going to be a statutory offense for anybody who's caught with pirated music because that's going to be fa effective as it will affect everybody those who are selling those who are downloading and the artists who also know that they should only deal with um, original works because if we're dealing with uh, piracy we are not only looking at the people who are selling if you are a broadcaster and you do not pay for your copyright license you are as good as a pirate because you 
you are playing music without authority meaning there's nothing going to the artist if you are an artist and you are copying other people's music it means you are a pirate yourself because you are taking somebody else's music without paying and nothing goes to them so if we have laws that uh, criminalize this piracy in a different manner than it is already provided in the copyright act at the moment because we've already proved that the implementation is not yielding the results that we want mm -hmm. i think that is where we should start um i think the education system is being changed to include copyright laws as far as i know the last time when we were advocating for it and then that can come next because if um, people learn from an early stage about copyright and intellectual property they will grow knowing that this is part of industry this is part of work this is what gives people money and because those same children are going to go to university they're going to go to college after that they're going to work and then as they get into different companies they're going to know about intellectual property if you just look at it all companies have intellectual property either feed from intellectual property or they have their own intellectual property but in zimbabwe it's only a few companies that really value intellectual property okay we, we should also have um political will mm -hmm. our honorable is here um in their own constituencies they they have followers in uh, whatever platform that they get and they try to slot in uh, or bring in that uh, issue of piracy, the ills of piracy to the artist, to the community that we live in and also to the business industry uh, as a whole. So if, if these people, they preach about uh, the ills of piracy to our followers, to their followers, uh, whenever or wherever they get the platform, it will help. Uh, also, even the musicians themselves, they should speak up we have got popular musicians, uh, your, your Tukus, your Ja Praisers, uh, you name them. But if they are quiet about pirates, then the the piraters or even the the general public think that it is normal, it is good. They, they, they are making money. But if they get the platform, they go to the radio, they speak up. Uh, when they are at the front of their audience, yeah. before the show, they speak up about, about uh, the use of piracy. And, and encourage mm. their fans to buy mm. original products you see so it will okay. help um yes. uh, on that regard speaking of original products someone here has put in a like auntie who puts the price of a cd Arikudura. that's why people have resorted to buying uh pirated music yeah i i, I think we there is a saying in this uh, country to say to not as you know you know we love free things <laughs> And as far as music is concerned, you know, musicians have always been derided in this country for a very long time. Even parents did not uh, recognize uh, music as an industry and did not encourage uh, yes. their children to get into music. So it's, it starts from there. But I also want to say that uh, the law is currently uh, provided, um, must be enforced by both the police and yes. the courts. Yes. And this attitude that music, you know, is free and it's not a serious thing permeates throughout uh, all the enforcement uh, agencies. And I'm sure um, even some, a policeman driving a car is probably playing pirated music as well. Mm -hmm. So we need a very strong attitudinal change at various levels. Mm -hmm. But you also need to look at this in context because intellectual property as a discipline is very new in this country um, even for lawyers not many have studied intellectual property to understand sure. it mm -hmm. and its relevance to the economy so then there is need for training mm -hmm. even of magistrates and judges in, mm -hmm. you know in some countries you have a ministry of intellectual property that's how important it is. And we need to get to that level where we recognize that protection of innovation, you know, economies are driven by innovation. And I, I don't think that we are prioritizing this issue that much, uh, putting it uh, at a, at a, you know, on a pedestal. So, Honorable, Honor, you are in government. I mean, I mean, in this room, probably be the one who's closest, closest to making sure that these laws are implemented. Mm -hmm. uh, Police here spoke about how there's need for us to have separate laws apart from the copyright law to make sure that all these loopholes are tight to the ones that we're mm -hmm. talking about. How can we make government? take the issue of music seriously we of course we've spoken about how there are 
when you talk about how there's need for attitude change generally across the board, but mm. speaking specifically about government, how can we make government see music as seriously as any other career in this country? You know, it starts with the musicians, like I indicated. Musicians need to be organized around this issue. Government responds to interest groups. You have the Bankers Association. If they have issues with the matters that pertain to them as uh, bankers, uh, they have an organized structure through which they communicate with the government. But as far as musicians are concerned, we sort of operate as uh, individuals. And, you know, we just complain. Uh, I know um, my daughter, Rudocha, once organized a, a meeting to discuss this. And there was hardly 10 people that uh, rocked up to discuss a matter that is really a bread and butter issue to every musician. So my call is for musicians to be organized. My second call, and if you are organized, uh, like I said, I attended a meeting with Dr. Mafumo when we met uh, Minister Kazembe Kazembe. He was very responsive and very helpful because... Uh, Dr. Mafumo was very uh, direct and he had evidence that he gave to the minister and the minister said, look, I didn't understand that the uh, problem was as big as this. So I would like to call upon musicians to congregate around this issue and give position papers, research, make a, a researched presentations to government on how the copyright law should be. And I also think that uh, Zemura should be effectively um, financed mm -hmm. so that it has capacity to deal. It's not good enough for, I, I don't know how many officers they have that can go around with the ZRP. <laughs> uh, um, I doubt that there is any meaningful dent that is happening uh, on, on, on this issue. So if there are people, for example, the musicians can petition parliament and complain about this issue. So there hasn't been any... There hasn't been. Well? There hasn't been. I chair the Justice League and Parliamentary Committee at Parliament and recently we had uh, people had issues on elections. They petitioned and they came to see us. We have had women with peculiar issues, people with disability. So why are musicians not organized around this particular issue so that they can then present a petition to, to parliament. It's a serious and fundamental issue of um, survival for them as an industry. Why are they not able to come to parliament and make a complaint about this with very educated musicians, uh, very talented musicians? If I look, for example, uh, because I've interacted with Zim Danso uh, musicians, it's a huge industry. We, we, I don't even think government is a research uh, that is a, that informs them as to the extent of this uh, industry. So we need to be more organized as musicians so that we petition the authorities. Okay, speaking of complaints, uh, this one I want to refer to Zemura. Uh, musicians have been complaining that they haven't been receiving their royalties. What seems to be the issue there? Um... The issue with royalties uh, most of the times emanates from the broadcasters. Most broadcasters in the country are behind with their payments of royalties. Mm -hmm. Some even three years behind or more. So most of the times when we distribute most of the monies that we are distributing are monies that we've collected from the shops and other business enterprises, not the broadcasters. Yet the broadcasters are the major users of music and most of the monies that should go to the musicians should be coming from the broadcasters. So that is the ma major issue. Uh, uh, but at least I have a, a, a comment to make on that. It's a, it's a very unusual situation where the broadcaster um, decides to give you a list of the music that they have played. They, they take it to Zimura and say, this is what we have played. There must be an independent way. Uh, and, and I like the fact that uh, they are going digital because you can't just decide that as far as your tax is concerned, you are going to pay so much. You know, you just declare. So maybe it comes back to the whole system. And it's the like the entire have... system has got to be looked at and it must be auditable. It, you know, a, a broadcaster can't just sit and say, okay, 
this month I want to pay $100. So I'll say I've played Fortune Jersey, Dr. Mapfumo, Dr. Mtukuzi, blah, 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 and give them. Okay, so Zimura, what have you done uh, to make sure that there is some sort of level of uh, accountability when it comes to broadcasters? And if they don't bring the royalties, what, what do you do as Zimura? Do you have any authority to take them somewhere for, for being penalized of sorts? Yes, we, we've been to the courts with the broadcasters, even up to the Supreme Court. We've been to the arbitration center uh, with different broadcasters. And in most cases, we win the case because uh, you cannot lose a case of intellectual property where music has been used. But then our um, economic situation, our political situation sometimes does not allow us to... to get our hands on the money. The broadcaster can say, yes, we owe the money, but, but we, we don't, don't have, have the money. money at the moment. We are going to pay and we can only afford to give them $2,000 a month. And then after that, even if you have a court order, they will still tell you, we are, we are not refusing to pay, but we don't have the money. This is how much we can give you at the moment. And we have to accept that because you can't keep going to court. It, it, it's costly and you use more money that is supposed to go to the artist at the well, end of Mona the Lisa, day. I think that there is a way around this. You know, if you don't pay your taxes, Zimra, as opposed to Zimura, they'll <laughs> garnish your account. They'll simply go to your bank account. By operation of law, they're entitled to give an instruction to the bank to say that so much from that account. So they are capacitated to make that they move. They are capacitated by Zimura, the law. Yes. Is Zimura capacitated to make a move like that by the law? We can only make it through the courts. Through the courts. Oh, so what, that's what, a witness. What, yeah, what I'm suggesting is that the new copyright law, given the gravity of the matter at hand, must allow them power to simply garnish the account of the broadcaster. That, just like Zimra does. You can argue later. Because it's an entire industry that has been pulverized. It's It's been taken to the ashes. So... The need for that garnish uh, order by operation of the law so can be justified. You are part of the your justice and legal committee, as you said, in Parliament. What what can you do to make sure, what, what role can you play to make sure that this is done? Our role is um, a, a, a very simple and straightforward one. If we are petitioned hmm. by musicians, yes, petitioners, hmm. with the musicians, bring your case with the detail and evidence will listen to you. So what is lacking is initiative from the actual yes, musicians and the stakeholders. Yes. They must use parliament because that's where the laws are made. Once they come, my committee, for example, will look and listen um, at the evidence that they've given us. We'll then go to parliament, National Assembly, uh, with our recommendations arising from the discussions that have uh, happened. And from there, a law can then be initiated. We can then make a specific recommendation to the relevant authority. And in this particular case, it would be the Minister of Justice to say this is what we would like to see in a new copyright law. So we expect musicians to come together. They are a huge force. That's why they attract huge crowds. Why can not, they not attract each other and work on so this? Honorable Chassis is saying Parliament is just waiting to be petitioned and then they will take action. Another issue that has been uh, of, um, of note when it comes to musicians uh, is the issue of disputes on who owns a song when there is a duet uh, mm -hmm. featuring so-and-so. Who is the owner of the song? It depends on the contract that they, the two get into. But then talking of contracts as well, most mm -hmm. of the times we discover that they do not even sign these contracts. Mm -hmm. They do verbal agreements and at the end of the day you don't know who did what and who did how much. But what is supposed to happen is when two people be, uh, decide to come together to make one song, it should be clear who has written the lyrics, who has done the music, who, who is doing what, and they should agree on the percentages. We have what are called uh, split sheets at our office that they can fill in that determine who gets what in terms of the percentages um, of the royalties. But then if they just uh, do 
uh, music together and they don't agree on who owns they don't sign own. it yeah. so they actually have to have some sort of a written agreement yes so that tomorrow they will not be arguing who did what you spoke about a split form so do they have to specifically come to Zemura if certain artists uh, decide for example say if Honorable Chassis decide to have a collaboration with me we have to come to Zemura together to sign that form there we use it when they uh, declare their works Okay. When you come to Simira with your CD, we want to know who's the owner of each song which is on the CD. So if there are more than one composer on the CD, then you have to fill in the split uh, sheet and say this one did the guitar, this one did the music, this one did the lyrics, and this one is supposed to be given 5%, this one gets 20%. But then we notice that there's a lot of greed where those situations are concerned because somebody who has written the lyrics forgets that if they did not put the music to the lyrics, the one who brought the music has got their own rights. Oh, okay. So yeah. there needs to be clarity on that. Y- yes, it needs to be clarified. So, sorry, Mona Lisa, to take you back to what you asked Honorable about the, the contribution of the government to, Zim, or to copyright or intellectual property. Uh, I feel the government can do a lot. Um, some awareness campaigns can be done. Um, Telling the people about the value of music, the value of creativity to our community, um, or how uh, intellectual property or even copyright can contribute to our economy. Um, looking at other developed countries, they are driven by the intellectual property. So if you don't respect uh, intellectual property at the government level, we have got government institutions who are not complying with copyright law. Then if the government fails to do that, then who else is going to do it? So the government, I feel, should lead by example. Uh, those institutions that they know that they're supposed to pay uh, Zimura some royalties, they should do so. And and uh, petitioning, uh, or petitioning, sorry, petitioning, um, uh, it's a good idea. We can engage people. We I think we once did one uh, a few years back and uh, it failed to take off because of other political influences so so for me i feel uh, that um, uh, the government should lead by example they should they should understand if they are supposed to pay something they should simply do that Okay, um, as we round up the program, we have a very few, we have a few minutes left for the program. Uh, we are having the commemorations tomorrow. I understand as Zimbabwe, there are certain commemorations happening tomorrow. What is the plan for uh, intellectual, World Intellectual Property Day tomorrow? Okay, um, tomorrow we are going to have a match uh, from uh, Africa Unit Square uh, to the College of Music. Um, uh, we are going to start at 10 and then we are going to finish in the afternoon around uh, five, but we are going to have live performances at the College of Music. So the main purpose of this match is to uh, make people aware of this day because it is our first time to celebrate this day uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, So it's it's, it's a critical day for us. It's an important day for us as as an organization or as the musical industry. Um, so we encourage people to come to participate and get some flyers. You get to know one or two or three things on the flyers that we are going to distribute. Okay, is there going to be any form of uh, maybe people getting to know more about intellectual property? As they, do her musicians have information that they're going to get? Uh, we spoke about how there isn't much information going around, but tomorrow being our World Intellectual Property Day, are there going to be like workshops, for instance, that are going to be educating particularly musician, musicians on the importance of intellectual property? Yes, there is a workshop that is going to be going on at Aripo tomorrow. Aripo is the African Intellectual Property, uh, Intellectual Regional Intellectual Property Organization. So they've organized this workshop to raise awareness on intellectual property, and I think they've invited the stakeholders that they want to attend that workshop, and musicians are part of the stakeholders.
Okay, so musicians should make their way there to the workshop. All right, uh, as we're on with the program, just going to read a few more comments that have been sent through. Piracy is not only on CDs, but on social media, such as WhatsApp, and something should be done to regulate these platforms. Mm -hmm. That is according to Harmony Tembo, who is in Chinoy. And then there's another comment here. Uh, there has to be adequate supply and stable economic environment. Imagine the new curriculum and no books to use, or only a few available. The option is to just buy photocopiers from the corners like uh, the the conversation has been going it's everybody everybody has to play a role to make sure that musicians work uh, is respected everyone has to one one takeaway from this program for me is I got from honorable chassis Parliament is waiting for to be petitioned by musicians for them to take action I hope musicians will stop complaining uh, like what honorable chassis has said and then we'll actually take action and we'll see how government will respond from there uh, thank you so much to my guests uh, thank you to policy and Nube, who is the executive director of uh, Zimbabwe Music Rights Association and she was also the committee chairperson uh, for the commemorations that have been held tomorrow. I also had the deputy director of the Zimbabwe Music Rights Association, Henry Makombe, and also Honorable Fortune Chassi, who's a legislator for Mazowe South, who's also a musician and he had a lot to say about uh, intellectual property. Thank you so much for coming through to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we have time for here on the platform. Coming up next is The Y Zone. I'm Mona Lisa Dubé. Stay tuned to ZFM Stereo.